the recorder. Thank you, probably is. So, welcome back to Paul TV and Paul some more. <laughs> oh, welcome to Chop Donkey Tasting Rooms. Hello, Jared. Hi, Nate. How are you? We've got a special guest today. We have, indeed. We've Steve got uh, Steve from... Farrell from... 8 Arch in indeed, Whitmore. Yeah. Not far away. Hello. Hello. Hi, Steve. Thanks for joining us. No problem at all. Your first brewer that we've had on. The so first one? Good. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm looking I'm, forward to um, discussing I, your brewery and your beers. Do I get a bit of a plaque or something being the first one? Yeah, I think we can uh, do that. Jared, uh, you something up? Carbon, yeah. 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 <laughs> you can put Jared knock that up and send it in the post. <laughs> I'll frame I'll, it. I'll on with that now. <laughs> <laughs> Keep cracking, Jared. <laughs> so, Steve suddenly kindly sent us up some beers that we're gonna we're gonna review and try later. Some uh, Avro and you called it Avro, uh, Little yeah. Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> so you can um, you can buy these from me on your um, uh, on your website. Direct. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously due to the current situation, we, I mean we had a web shop already set up, but we were able just to switch everything over mid March time just to go to our web store. We've had great support yeah. local and national uh, through that so that's no, been great yeah no it's a great idea to um order some beers and now uh, i've heard some really good things about them they're reasonably priced as well the um avro's two pounds 70 and the little dragon's two pound 30 yeah 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 i mean so that's so, a good price yeah you know it, it's we, we try and be competitive on that side of things you know uh, the product is you know they the arvo has a lot of hops in it most of our beers do tend to have a lot of hops in it um but you know we we just try and be a bit competitive on it you know we don't try and underprice people and we just try and give a good price for the end consumer yes it's, it price. sounds like it's a good price sorry jared as i say a fair price i say i'm rather jealous i've had to go for this sort of virtual background of the bottle wall whereas uh, steve's actually got a nice shiny brewery behind yeah, i've got me. lots of shiny things behind me yeah. Yeah. Yeah, i've yeah, got an eye on it as well just there as well you can see yeah, very good <laughs> CCTV. So, Steve, it'd be good to uh, it'd be good if you could just tell us a little bit about uh, HR, 8 Arch, perhaps started, how long did you go for all that kind of stuff? Yeah, uh, well, it was me. I started brewing uh, Jan end of January, beginning of February 2015 um, in my hometown, Wimborne. In case anyone doesn't know where that is, we're in the deepest dark of Dorset on the south coast. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was predominantly just I started out in my garage, then went, here you go, let's, let's start a brewery, a bit of a mad thing to do. Um, Predominant way, it was just for cask. Um, I just wanted to make beer, um, package it, sell it to the local area, and uh, make an earning for myself. And then it sort of gathered the pace from there. And then since then, you know, I've now got two employees um, as well as myself. Um, we've moved from cask and we went to bottle originally, then into 330 cans and keg. Um, start 2018, we moved into the next door unit, expanded a bit more, and. Uh, yeah, it's not been non-stop from there. Now we export across Europe as well. So it's a, it's been a, oh. a fun time. I see wow. the awards and stuff as well. Yeah, no, the mental receiver awards, you know, the first ever awards I entered was obviously we're in the Southwest region of Seba. Uh, so I entered the beers in, I think it was uh, 2016 was the first one and it. Corval, our uh, five and a half percent IPA, which is probably people, the one that this the bit people know us for. Um, that one in Golden Cask, and then it went up to the National Awards at the start of 2017 and won Golden X category up there as well. So, the yeah. first time entering, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a head spinning time to <laughs> win those awards, and then they've carried on since. With um, earlier this year, just before the virus hit, we uh, won um, National Overall Champion Small Pack at the awards for Square Logic at 4.2 pounds. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, did you find such a good how did you become such a good brewer then? How did you learn? It was just literally, I, I honestly, and I, this is what I tell, always tell people, I can't remember why I started doing it uh, at home. Um, but it's just a case of homebrew books. You know, I, I had no history in brewing whatsoever. And it was just a case of, how do I brew beer? Um, and then you just books, online, um, revision, bought a little kit. And it just went from there. And it, you know, I, just because of what job I was in, I was in a family transport company. Uh, we got some of our biggest 
customers, so we closed the transport company down. Like, well, what do I do now? And I had job offers, and I was like, right, let's start the brewery. So, and then you learn, and just carry on learning. You know, we're five years in now, and you still learn. You know, with new trends. You know, whether it be the New England style, East Coast style pails that are coming in, in the last few years. Um, you never stop learning, and, and you know, processes change. You always try and be better than the last brew. Um, so yeah, you, the answer is you never stop learning. Right. Sounds like a, dabble, a, a natural yet. progression. Yeah. Sorry, Jared. Carry on. So we've had a dabble, but nothing too serious. I did have a bottle of our uh, truffle and licorice root ale the other day. That's matured quite nicely over the last three years. You see, if, I'd be very intrigued with that if I like licorice. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Is what ABV is, is it? Sorry? What ABV is it? Should be five. Who knows? Five seven. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I think it's about five percent. All depends how many yeah, bottles it have, how you feel at the end of it. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so tell us a little bit more about the uh, the beers that we've got here. Then. So Arvo, uh, Pale Ale, uh, Southern Hemisphere, so I'm guessing that's the hops uh, yeah, down I mean, that way. We uh, brewed that one uh, first. We have only brewed it once before, which is uh, around February, March time last year. Um, that all literally went into cask. There might have been a couple of cakes, but we didn't put any of it into can. Um, so when obviously lockdown happened, we were like, what, 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 what should we brew? So we decided to look back at some of the ones that we uh, brewed previously and thought, do you know what, this is a good one, you know, it's four and a half percent, let's do it. So we changed it slightly this time, we went very much more New England East Coast style on this, so you know, a lot of oats, a lot of wheat, um, nothing in the boil basically, it was just all in the steep at the end, um, then okay. we went quite heavy in the dry hops, so there's a lot of Nelson, and, uh, a lot of uh, Big Secret, and there's a bit of Matika in the back end, quite a bit steep. So, so you don't get it, mate. Say again. Yeah, I've got the cans right in front of me, and I couldn't help but drink it. And it's really, really <laughs> nice. You should have it, Jared. It's really, yeah, uh, it's really juicy. You're getting some pineapple. It's tropical. It's a, like a really, really nice juicy beer. You'd, you'd like this, Jared. Good. I might just open mine in a second. I, I personally <laughs> think this is not me big in the top, but I find it quite refreshing. Um, yeah. One thing that you get with the New England East Coast style beers, I find, is that they can get cloying. Um, but with this one, you know, it has, you know, it's got the, the English yeast in it. It's got the higher match temperatures. It's got the, a lot of the oats and a lot of the wheat there. But it's still quite refreshing. And, you know, at 4.5% four, four beer, you can have quite a few of them and not feel sick afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> it depends how many you have. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Yeah, it would be quite easy to have a few of these, I'm sure. Yeah, because you're talking to me now, I'm going to open it. Yeah, I know, the open more it. you, you can drink it, the more you get. Sorry, Jared. And I'm going to start drinking it. You can ask about the next one. I'm enjoying this one still. <laughs> so, so sort of at the end, you're getting the uh, you're getting some pine. It's a little bit peppery. But um, the main thing is I'm getting was the pineapple. It's really nice. Tropical. I think you, you do, the, the Nelson comes through really well in it. Really, you know, the refreshing. You know works yeah. really well, especially with Big Secret. You have to be quite careful with Big Secret, um, especially when you use it in the it can give a really, really harsh business. Um, so just yeah. using it in the dry hop, it, you know, you don't pick up any of that at all. It's come out really well. Yeah, it's a really good balance. Cool. Really good. It seems bad that you're just saying drinking the beers while you're just, you know, talking to us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to drive hey, home soon, so. Hey. Lot, yeah. <laughs> okay, and the other one we've got, the little drink. Um, Nate had done his homework and uh, suggested there's a bit of a sort of a, a mix between like an ale and uh, a lager uh, culture. Yeah, yeah. The, the, it came, this one came about, uh, Mark who works for me, um, it would have been three, three, four years ago, I can't remember now, but where we are in Wimbledon, we've got a very big festival in June time, uh, the Folk Festival, I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, and they, a few years back, they, they locked down with drinking on the streets um, during the festival and then three or four years ago, I can't remember how it was three or four, um, they relaxed that and we got asked by the organiser if we wanted to have a bar in the square, which we did a mark like We should brew something a bit different, not a pale ale, you know, you want something quite light and refreshing for that time of year. So we went with the Colch and it was brewed just for that. Um, and we, in that first initial batch, we had clear lime in it as well. Um, yeah. And then since then, it's become a, a bit of an animal. <laughs> it's a, it's a what, you know, at our tap room here on Fridays when we're normally open, it's just the permanent on the bar. It's probably the only permanent one we have. Uh, oh, wow. 
it, it just absolutely flies. You know, it's very simple. It's uh, very clean, very crisp. Um, cold. So, yeah, it's a, it's a hybrid between a, a lager and an ale. Um, but yeah, it, it's very, very refreshing, it's very clean and crisp. So tempt some of the lager drinkers over to some more of a, an ale style beer, perhaps? Well, actually, whenever we get people coming and asking them, oh, have you got anything like a lager? And we're like, well, try the Little Dragon, it's cold, it's not a lager, try it. We've never, ever had anyone turn it down and turn their nose That's up and they always gone for it. So I'm, I'm holding on to that at the moment, we've not had anyone turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> where, where do you get the names from, Steve? You've got a lot of uh, beers, so a lot of unusual names. The original beers, um, going back, so probably the only original one that we've still got going, which would be Corbel, that is actually an arch, so obviously the link with the name Eight Arch, uh, which is commonly used in India. So it's an IPA, Indian Pale Ale. Um, oh. So that's why we went with Corbel. Um, and then the names since then, they've sort of floated about a little bit. We, we use a lot of musical influences. Mark Rue really likes his music, so do I. Um, so we, we cut and paste song titles or lyrics from songs and put them in. Um, a little dragon, I actually can't remember which song the first one of Mark, so I can't remember where that came from. And then, like, Arvo is Southern Hemisphere in the Arvo, that sort of thing. So uh -huh. it, it, we, just, we just try and have a bit of a play every now and then. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it, most, a lot of them come from musical influences now, those lyrics that we like, the songs and stuff like that. Yeah. Cool. Yes. And in terms of uh, beers and stuff, though, is there any sort of beers, you know, the beer you've always wanted to make that you haven't actually got around to making yet? Or, you know, have you sort of uh, done pretty much what you'd like to? I'm just limited. Uh, well, we, we've made quite a few different styles. Um, obviously, we, we've done like ice cream pails, the Moo Moo series, so that's another mm -hmm. musical input. Uh, um, the one thing that we haven't done, which I really, really want to do, but it's getting around to doing it, is bow wage. Mm. on a empty stout. Um, we did do barrel aging with a brown ale once, um, but that was a few years back now. Uh, but, you know, I really want to get on. And, I mean, we've got barrels here. They're just not being used at the moment. So okay. that would be the next thing that I really want to crack on with. So, you know, oh, when we go down the barrel aging of an empty stout and sticking some sour cherries in there or something like that, you know, I, it's getting around to doing it there. That's the problem. <laughs> sounds good. Sour yeah, cherries, sounds definitely. Good. Some sour cherries just the other day from Niddle. <laughs> Some yeah, amaranth yeah. cherries. Can't wait. That's, that, that'll, be, that'll be the next thing. <clears throat> Sounds good to me. Right up my street. I don't know about Yeah, definitely. That'll be on my street. Good beer's <laughs> good beer. It doesn't matter about Absolutely. the song. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been a like a bread aroma. Yeah, it's unusual. It's, like I say, it's, uh, it's, it's not a lager. You can tell it's not a lager. It's, uh, it's, it's very much got its L characteristics in there, but it's, you know, it's got a low finishing gravity, so which makes it really light and clean and crisp. Um, and then the, the German hops in there, you know, just gives it a really nice you know, fruity aroma. It's subtle, but yeah. it's there. Yeah. And, you know, you can, by trying it there, I'm sure you'll be able to see why it appeals to lager drinkers. Yeah, 100%. I can see why, you know, everyone likes it. Really, it's nothing really better like than once, once you've canned it and it's come out of the FB, it's one, two degrees on a really hot day, just sitting at the back door after a long canning bag, just like, crack one of those over. It's great, really refreshing. Yeah. Oh, can I, it just, it tastes really moorish though. It's hard not to keep on drinking this quickly. Yeah. It's very, <laughs> that's why we get through so much of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great, okay, well, um, I haven't got any more questions myself. Have you got any, uh, anything else you wanted to ask, Nate? Or I've got done? one question. I read that you were pulling points in the House of Commons. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, what was that, 2016? That was uh, through our local MP. Um, so he got in touch and was like, do you just want to have some beer up in the House of Parliament? I was like, yeah, no, that's great. So I can't remember how much they had now. They had like six versions of it, something like that. And, you know, for a day out to be able to go into the House of Parliament and pour your own beer, no, that is, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, some, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to do something like that. You know, there's probably a lot of people out there that wouldn't want to be going into Parliament. <laughs> they probably don't like the people around you there. But uh, no, to be able to go and do something like that, you know, for a brewery that was just over a year old to be doing something like that, great, absolutely great. For me. Yeah. great That's a massive, massive compliment. Well done. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. no, it, was, it was a great day out. They looked after us well up there as well. Right.
Cool. Uh, and just to end, the, the beers that you sort of got um, on the web shop at the moment, are, are new or interesting ones, or is it mainly the core range? Or Well, basically, since uh, lockdown happened, the brews that we've been getting in, you know, don't be all going into cans, uh, obviously the pub trade at the moment, so we're not casting or something. Uh, it's just been the core ones, basically. So we're getting the Session session IPA, Square Logic the Pale, um, Little Dragon, um, Easy Life, which is 5% Pale, and Corbett's 5.5%. IPA. Um, so they've basically just been on repeat dainty in there as well, which is our original New England style. Um, so no, they've been basically just ones going in on repeat. Mark, <laughs> Mark just, <laughs> don't, he's, he won't come and shop, you might have right? Uh, yeah, no, it, it, those are the ones. I mean, this week, I mean, we, we've just had massive orders coming through. So at the moment, the beers are coming out this week, all going to ban, we'll be in Corborn session out this week. So hopefully they'll be going on the web store. Uh, towards the end of this week and then next week we've got Easy Life and Square coming out uh, and then hopefully within the next week or two we're going to be getting a, a special fruited wheat beer in tank as well but uh, oh, I won't nice. give away too much on that at the moment. <laughs> nice. Uh, but what I have got as well um, for you guys, any of you guys who um, watched um, your um, videos on here we've just put a discount code onto the web store as well so that's going to be valid till the end of the month as well for 10% off. Um, okay. So we need to call anyone who watches this to see that will you guys just stick in, pour some more, just the code, without any spaces, and you get 10% off. Oh, so brilliant. Until, Cheers, until the yeah. end of this I month. I recommend you guys get on that because these beers are great. And they're great value anyway, even without the uh, discount code. Great beers. Thank you. I that. No problem at all. Great to talk to you. We'll let My you get pleasure. I'll try yeah. all sitting behind the desk doing paperwork, one or the other, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds exciting. <laughs> it's not. Okay, great. Cheers, <laughs> thank you. Cheers, pour some more. Cheers, Hang on if you Cheers like, yeah. thank you. Cheers.